All right, Manny. Um, tell me what you think the three most uh, important issues are facing District 1. For District 1, the most important issues right now is to make sure that the infrastructure, i.e. the roads, are able to sustain and enable the voters to get to work and back without interference, without too much interference. Okay. Infrastructure. Number two is to give them a tax break. You know, anybody 65 and older, like I said in there, 65 and older, should have a $100,000 tax exempt. Why? Because that savings will stimulate the economy and it'll force the city to budget themselves the way the rest of us budget ourselves. How much revenue loss does that represent for the city budget? I don't know. I haven't done the calculation. I do know that when you're 65 or older, you've paid enough. And $100,000 is not too much to ask for a deduction, especially those people are going to take the savings and put them back into the economy. Look, the way it is right now, it's a $10 increase a month for, for every time they seem to meet, every year, every two years, it's an extra $10 a month. The EPISD, you know, is going for this $10. That's a separate taxing entity. Yeah, but still, it all, it all affects us, right? It all affects us. And I just, I want to give a tax break to people who are 65 and older. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing, the business, this idea of the code uh, inspectors, the right. code compliance, all that. The ones I've run into have an attitude of a gotcha, of a policeman, of a, you didn't do it right, try again. Instead of saying, instead of working and being more friendly and saying, you know what, this is the way it's supposed to be. you got to use this certain IDOD pipe, whatever. There isn't that friendly attitude towards helping local businesses comply with the new codes. And that's hurts businesses. Okay. Um, what do you think, uh, you know, and you know you're running in a, in a large field and you run on a large field uh, for District 1 before. What do you think most distinguishes you from the other candidates in the field? Tenacity and, and uh, veracity. Let me give an example. When I see something... Veracity or veracity? Veracity. Veracity, okay. Veracity. What, by that I mean that I'm going to go after an issue even if the people affected get fired or get embarrassed. I want people accountable. For example, this Country Club Road, how can we justify over two years uh, blocking Country Club Road? How can we live in a country that can go to the moon and back and still not finish a two-mile road within two, within two years? Okay? Same thing with Wrestler. Why do they have to tear up all four sections at a time? Same thing with McRae. They're, they're making our I-10 I beautiful, which I know is an interesting thing, but we can still influence TxDOT, right? So why don't they broaden uh, McRae going east? Okay? This is the things that they have to take into consideration. The voter is able to get to work so he can pay for these people who don't seem to be responsible for meeting the deadlines. Okay. Um, what specific actions would you take to ensure that the quality of life bond projects that have been approved by the voters um, are seen, to, uh, seen through uh, to fruition? Well, we need to, we, we, the money's there. It needs to be uh, allocated and used with the approval and reflective of the desires of the people. In other words, we don't want a handful of people deciding when and how much to spend at what time. We want, in my case, for example, I want to, in, I want to uh, inform the voters, especially District 1, of how it's about to be allocated and how much and where, so that we can have a voice. And early enough to where a group of people can go over there and say, no, we don't want it done this way at this time, we want it used over here instead. So we really need to be transparent, like I plan to be so transparent that people will know what I know the same day that I know it. And I'm going to be shadowing the mayor, okay? I'm going to be the mayor's shadow to find out what's happening with our money so that we can react to it before they sell us something we don't really want or the timeline that we don't want it. So I've heard this, this term about voice, giving people a voice in government again. Um, but to use your, your analogy about not having a small group of people make the decisions uh, and involving the rest of the community, but don't we in fact already have that system? We have such low voter turnout. Isn't it incumbent upon the, the electorate to, to take know, the lead on that? Well, one of the ways to overcome that is to provide better information to the average voter. For example, if you read the agenda for the city, that is kind of like uh, professional jargon, uh, government jargon, legal jargon. I want because to, it's required by the by the uh, Open Meetings Act. And so can you have an explanation of what it means to the average layman. Okay? I see what you're saying. The other thing is the website. You can get on the website and you can hunt all day long, and it still won't answer the three basic questions: What are they about to do with my money? Who's affected by it? And what can I do to influence it? I plan to change all that. I really, anybody who votes for me will be able to go to my website and know what I know at the same time I know it. 
early enough to do something about it. And the accountability, I mean, if, something, if somebody doesn't do their job, they need to go, they need to be accountable, they need to be fired if necessary. The way it is right now, look at this fellow Bartlett from uh, Country Club Road. You know what he said on, uh, lately on the news about three weeks ago? He says, we want to thank the people of El Paso for being patient, and we're asking you to be more patient. Well, no, that's not the right response. The right response is, I'm going to stay on top of this project until it gets done, and we want it done as soon as possible, or else heads are going to roll. You know, I have what's called a holy anger. I'm fed up with it, because I'm the one that has to drive back and forth to work every day, and mm -hmm. I think everybody else is frustrated getting to home an hour later because somebody wants to take an extra year to finish a project. Mm -hmm. Enough is enough. Two more questions, and one of them you're going to love. What are you going to do to control spending uh, in the city budget? Well, first of all, we're going to expose what's about to be spent what's about to be bought or what it's about to be spent on and then I'm going to do a cost-benefit analysis in other words what are the pros and cons are we going to get money for a buck a bang for a buck excuse me you know the last time I checked Ms. Joyce Wilson uh, increased our debt for quality of life has your quality of life doubled Actually, the voters, the voters increased yes, our debt but they for given, quality of life because it was the but, voters that approved it. But were they given sufficient information of the cost overruns? You then see, they shouldn't have voted. That, well, that's where I come in. I'm going to inform the voters with more detail and more information, especially of cost overruns mm -hmm. like we had on this, on this transfer of the city and on demolition of all city. The bottom line is people need to have more information readily available so they can get involved, and I will be there leading them. I will be there leading them. And again, the code compliance, CAD, that's another thing. CAD is playing a game. They're, they're raising the value of homes without justification. Okay? So that's another trick they use to get more money out of the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. It's time to really defend us. I'm all for progress, but don't do it without the, vo the voter uh, uh, having an influence or a voice or, or a say in, in how it's being done. Final question, if you're talking to an undecided voter in District 1, what's your pitch? Look, if you want somebody that's going to go in there with fervor, fearless, and faithful, um, my allegiance is going to be to you, not to the mayor, not to good old buddy. I'm not going to go along to get along. I'm going to give you so much information that you're going to say, whoa, enough already. We trust you to do what you're going to do. I'm going to embarrass the people that are not doing their job, and I'm going to work with the people that are doing for the good of El Paso. But again, accountability. I, I think with all these projects that are going on, especially Country Club Road, somebody should have been fired when they found that pipe. I think the delay was because of a pipe. Since when does an, a pipe, an unforeseen pipe, take an extra year to do? It doesn't make sense. So uh, I'm going to give them the fervor and I'm going to give my allegiance to the voter instead of to the few people that some politicians answer to. All right.